Greetings fellow dungeon delvers and welcome to Dorans and Dragons. My name is Justin and I'm going to be your guide to bringing your favorite League of Legends champions to life in Dungeons and Dragons. Today we're building the dad bod haven for El Yordian shaman Udir. Udir was born under a blood moon in the Freljord, giving him a deep connection to the spiritual magic of the region. He joined the Winter's Claw tribe and spent years learning how to use his abilities with the tribe's shamans. The tribe was attacked by the Frost Guard, and when Udir's mentors were slain, he unleashed his talent and caused an avalanche that forced the enemy away. The surviving members lambasted Udir for not acting sooner, and his only solace was an iceborne woman named Kalkia. Lee Sin arrived one day, seeking a way to quell his own dragon spirit by gaining knowledge of the frail Yordian spirits. The two set off toward Ionia, where they would defeat the Noxian invaders at the Hirana Monastery and train there for the next several years. Once Udir achieved balance with the spirits raging inside of him, he returned home to rejoin the Winter's Claw and met Sejuani, the daughter of the woman he loved so many years ago. Now he serves as the tribe's shaman and has become Sejuani's oath father. Before we get started with the build, go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button so you're always notified when we release our builds. We'd like to take a minute and thank our awesome patrons over on Patreon who support us every month. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on and finding the harmony between the spirits and content creation. If you like our videos and want to support the channel, come join us over on Patreon today. Just a quick reminder that our Discord is now public for anyone to join. Check out the link down below in my link tree. Alright, now let's get into it. Here's a quick preview of the build. For race, we're going with Variant Human. For usual, our stats are going to be determined using the standard array. For our stat priorities, we're going to max strength and dump charisma. We do have a multi-class requirement of 13 in dexterity and wisdom. Our leveling path is going to be levels 1 through 3 in fighter, 8 levels of monk, and then we'll finish the build as a druid. Udir's passive, Bridge Between, will come from Action Surge and Flurry of Blows. His Q, Wad and Claw, is going to be Draconic Disciple and the Sweeping Attack Maneuver. Our W, Iron Mantle, will be the Shield Spell, Cure Wounds, and Second Wind. His E, Blazing Stampede, is going to come from Step of the Wind, Stunning Strike, and Freedom of Movement. And then we get Udir's R, Wingborn Storm, from Cone of Cold, and Ice Storm. For race, we're going with Variant Human for the free feat. Variant Humans get a plus one to two ability scores. We'll take a plus one to our strength and dexterity for some extra punching damage and multi-classing purposes. We'll also pick up the Nature Skill Proficiency, which when combined with his other proficiencies and our feet, will give you a well-rounded Freljordian. Speaking of that free feat, we're going with Tough, which is a favorite of the channel to get our Thick Kings a beefier hit point pull when necessary. For every level, you'll give yourself an additional two hit points, meaning you get 40 additional hit points by max level. For background, we're going with Far Traveler here, for his journey to Ionia with Lee Sin, and his generally nomadic lifestyle. Far Traveler gives us proficiency with Insight and Perception, and the All Eyes on You feature, meaning you draw attention through your travels simply by existing, and you can use this attention to your advantage to gain favors for you and your companions. Basically, big, muscly, shirtless guy equals free pass to the higher class of the place you're visiting. And I don't blame them one bit, Udir is a rocking a dad bod that most of us would kill for. For stats, we're going for the balance right intended, but definitely drop the ball on with this rework using the standard array. Roll if you want to, but keep at least a 13 in dexterity and wisdom for multi-classing purposes. And for once, our multi-classing maximums aren't what we're starting with. That honor goes to our strength, which we'll need to wall up on our enemies. I know this is going to be the most controversial part of the build, but New Deer is a strength-based powerhouse, and trying to do a max dex build while looking at his ripped splash art felt like a betrayal. After that, we'll go Wisdom from his time with Lee, honing his connection to himself and the spirits. Then we'll go with Constitution for that thick Feral Yordian goodness. Dexterity is next for his combat agility. We'll have an average intelligence and dump charisma. Alrighty, since we don't need any equipment, let's kick off the build as a fighter to make our punches hurt, grab some healing, and pick up our passive. Fighter is going to give us skill proficiencies in athletics and survival, completing our frail Yordian background sufficiently. We also learn a fighting style here, which is why we went with these levels early. Unarmed fighting is going to make our unarmed strikes deal 1d8 plus our strength mod and damage since we don't have any other weapons or shield. 
And finally, we'll gain some of the healing from our W with Second Wind, which lets you use a bonus action to heal yourself for 1d10 plus your fighter level once per rest. Remember to use this before you spend any hit die, or my comments section will come after you. Now, depending on what level your campaign is starting at, you can definitely take your first level in Monk here to get your unarmored defense, so you're not completely naked AC-wise. Or you can pick up some armor and coast until you get there. But since we're not doing that, we're going to keep going through Fighter, and at second level, Fighters get one of the best features in the game, Action Surge. Action Surge lets you push yourself to the limit once per rest and take an additional action on your turn, which is how we'll get our passive. Awaken your abilities by Action Surging and applying the extra effect. I'll explain more later on. Level 3 fighters choose their martial archetype. We're going to get Udyr's Chain Lightning Strikes with the Battlemaster. Battlemasters gain Combat Superiority Die, which are a pool of 48s that can be used to enhance your attacks, which recharge on any rest. We'll grab two maneuvers to use those dice with, Sweeping Attack and Trip Attack. Sweeping Attack lets you target another creature within 5 feet of the creature you hit and roll your Superiority Die. If your original attack roll would have hit that creature as well, then it takes whatever you rolled on the die of the same damage type as the attack you just made. So when we get our lightning strikes from level 3 monk, this sweeping attack will essentially be lightning chaining from enemy to enemy. Trip attack is just going to be an early version of RE, letting you force a strength save on a creature and knocking it prone if it fails. And now that we've gotten the important bits out of the fighter class, we'll head over to Ionia with Lee Sin and learn how to be a monk. First level Monk is going to give our dad bod some hardiness, with a new AC calculation thanks to Unarmored Defense. Our new AC calculation is going to be 10 plus our Dex and Wisdom modifiers. Is our AC going to be very high? No, and if you want to wear some armor, have a ball, but it will definitely be more accurate the other way because Udyr doesn't care about getting hit, he charges through anyways. We'll also get our Martial Arts which is a lot of white noise, except for allowing us to make an unarmed strike with our bonus action, as long as we use an unarmed strike with our attack action. Spoiler alert, but getting to weaponize your bonus action freely on every turn is actually a huge damage increase, especially in the early game. Level 2 monks get two very Udyr features, unarmored movement and their spiritual energy, which is called Ki. Unarmored movement is going to bump our movement speed up by 10 feet, as long as we're not wearing armor or a shield. Our key though is a pool of points that are used to power several abilities we'll learn along the way. The two important abilities we start with are Flurry of Blows and Step of the Wind. Flurry of Blows is going to give us the extra attack speed from our passive by letting us spend a key point to make two unarmed strikes as our bonus action after we take the attack action. Then Step of the Wind will give us the move speed steroid from our E by also burning one key point to dash as a bonus action. You can also disengage if you want, which is perfect since Udyr running away is often a major part of his split push playstyle. Either way, when you use Step of the Wind, your jump distance is doubled. Use that information how you will. Level 3 monks get Deflect Missiles and choose their Monastic Tradition. Deflect Missiles could be used as a form of your W early on, since you're mitigating damage, so we'll cover it. As a reaction, when you're hit by a ranged weapon attack, you can reduce the damage by 1d10 plus your dex mod plus your monk level. If you reduce it to zero, you can catch it and fire the missile back, using your martial arts die to calculate damage. But more importantly, we're going to choose our monastic tradition. And what better way to honor Lee Sin and their friendship than by going with Way of the Ascended Dragon. Now this comes with a bunch of features, but I'm going to focus on the important aspects only as we normally do. Draconic Disciple is going to make our unarmed strikes Draconic Strikes, letting us change the damage to Lightning for our Q, Fire for our E, and Cold for our R. On top of that, we'll get the Breath of the Dragon, giving us an early version of our R by letting us use one of our attacks to spray a 20-foot cone of Cold Draconic Energy, dealing two rules of the Martial Arts die in damage on a failed deck save. You have charges on the Breath based on your proficiency bonus, but you can also spend two key points to do it anyways if you're out of charges. At 4th level Monk, we'll get the first ability score improvement of the build. As always, we're going to lay out all of your choices here so you can pick and choose for yourself along the way. At Monk 4, we'll get the shielding portion of our W with Magic Initiate Sorcerer to pick up the shield spell. Shield is going to let us use our reaction 
to give us a plus 5 to our AC until the start of our next turn. At Monk 8, we'll round off our Dexterity and Constitution scores with a point each, increasing our AC by 1 and giving us a bump in hit points for some extra thickness. Then at Druid 4, we'll increase our Strength by 2 points for a bit more oomph to our punches, and finally at Druid 8, we'll bump our Wisdom up 2 points to increase the DCs on our Spell Saves and our Stunning Strike Saves. Level 5 Monks learn Extra Attack and Stunning Strike. Extra Attack is very straightforward letting us attack twice per attack action instead of just once. Stunning Strike is going to let us spend a key point to get the stun on our E by forcing a con save on a creature we hit. If it fails, it's stunned until the start of your next turn. And since actions take 6 seconds, this actually aligns with the lockout in game. 6 level monks improve their unarmored movement by another 5 feet and get key empowered strikes, making your unarmed strikes count as magical for overcoming those pesky resistances and immunities to non-magical attacks. Level 7 monks get evasion, which I wanted to mention because it's another good damage mitigation tool that rules well with your W. Anytime you make a deck save to take half damage from an effect, you take no damage if you succeed and only half damage if you fail. This actually mitigates a ton of damage and can definitely be the difference between life and death. And now that we've gotten our martial abilities online, we'll really embrace our spiritual abilities by taking some levels in Druid. Druids don't get much that we care about at this first level except the Cure Wounds spell, which we'll use as part of the healing on our W. As an action, you can heal yourself for 1d8 plus your Wisdom mod and hit points. At second level though, Druids get to choose their Druidic Circle. We're going to embrace the awesome spell list of the Circle of the Land, specifically the Arctic region to honor the Freljord. We'll talk about those spells up at 7th and 9th level though. At this level though, we'll get the Natural Recovery feature, letting us recover spell slots equal to half our Druid level during a short rest once per long rest. Jumping up to Druid 7, we'll learn some 4th level spells from our Arctic subclass. Freedom of Movement is going to be our Awakened E, giving us immunity to difficult terrain, paralysis, movement speed reductions, or being restrained. This lasts for an hour and does not require concentration, so lord help your DM and their poor poor monsters. We'll also get the persistent AoE slow from our R with the Ice Storm spell, letting you make a storm of ice in a 20 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder. Each creature in that cylinder has to make a deck save or take 2d8 bludgeoning and 4d6 cold damage. The slow comes from the entire area being difficult terrain until the end of your next turn. And finally at Druid 9, we'll learn a 5th level spell that'll make our R pack a huge punch. Cone of Cold lets you fire a blast of frigid air, dealing 8d8 cold damage to all creatures who fail a con save in a 60 foot cone. Any creature killed by the spell is turned into a frozen statue. Alright, now that we've completed the build, let's see how we did. First the good. Udir is going to run you down, hold you down, then either char you with lightning and fire, or freeze you solid with ice. There is no kiting him anymore. Also his damage in this build isn't half bad, and with the variety that Draconic Strikes provide, you have plenty of options to overcome resistances and whatnot. Now the bad. Udir says a boar's true shield is not a tide, but it's will. Which is good, because our AC is atrocious, but our wisdom is pretty high. And then as Kage pointed out in Discord, this build doesn't have a 20 in any of its scores, which is kind of a bummer. But this is a mad build, so what can you do? So what'd you think? I've included a link to this build via D&D Beyond in the description below, as well as Amazon links to the books used in this build. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We have a few awesome rewards and you get access to our great Discord community. We plan on churning out one league champion build every week. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll catch you on the Rift or in the Forgotten Realms.